Okay, good morning. I'm glad you chose to spend this Friday morning with me. I'll show you first what I added to week 13 in the website of the class. And then I'm going to spend some time exploring the main ideas from two more chapters from the last textbook, Wikipedia at 20, which is the beginning of a pattern. This is what I will do also through next week to complete my review of those chapters. Although, as I said many times, as you must have seen if you read those chapters, the content, the language in those chapters is very low key, very approachable, uh, not particularly scholarly or, or uh, deep, complicated. The concepts are not complex. So I'm just trying to give you a sense of what is the relevance of uh, the ideas in those chapters. And then, of course, as promised <clears throat> on Monday, I will provide a short list for your review for the final exam, a short list of readings, uh, and I will base my questions for the final exam on some of those readings and topics. I've already explained the areas for those questions, but this time I'll uh, give you a sense of what you should review in particular. At the end of the class, if there is time, I want to show you at least a segment from one of the videos, as we've done a number of times on a Friday morning, highlighting the user experience with one of the apps that was introduced on Wednesday, which is Obsidian, the most exciting of the three apps that I talked about. So under Wednesday's class, I added a few links <coughs> to the main web page of Obsidian Workflow and Nimbus Notes, and also some additional <coughs> pages. The uh, Obsidian Help gives you a good sense, it's not uh, too verbose, it gives you a good sense of how the apps the app works and I just discovered that they started offering a, an education on profit discount um, they don't disclose what the the amount of the discount so you actually have to apply the discount when you subscribe and uh, I, I don't have a subscription as I said obsidian can be used the free plan can be used you need to pay only if you want to sync the content across different devices without working on it yourself, because you can also tinker and obtain that result without paying, or if you want to publish uh, the content somewhere, okay? For workflow, since there isn't a lot, and these days you don't find really much attention paid to workflow on YouTube, uh, uh, I, I added the link to the Wikipedia page, because of course, uh, workflow is one of the old timers uh, it was introduced around 2010. It's been around a, a, a long time. And in fact, the difference, the glaring difference between these two apps is that Obsidian doesn't even have a Wikipedia page in spite of its growing popularity or flowy, which is on its way out, or a niche app uh, has one. Nimbus Note, I just added the main web page. This is this is the list of links that I added on Friday. As I said, I'm not going to use uh, more than one if uh, I have time. But if you have any interest uh, of the many uh, uh, YouTube videos that you find, I've added some that I thought uh, you could learn from or would help you explore the features in these apps. Uh, so you can click on them if you want to. And I added, again, YouTube videos only about Nimbus and about Obsidian. This is the link to the page where I'm adding my notes about the various chapters. So at this point inside Wikipedia 20, in our website, you find notes concerning four chapters and today we're going to talk about chapter three and chapter seven. Don't forget that at the end of the assignments, I added a few connected to the lecture of a week and 10 days ago, a few new readings, the entry from L'Encyclopédie 
in my PDF, of course, there isn't the whole entry, which is very long, but just the most significant passages in about nine or 10 pages. You need to log in, you need your Stony Brook credentials in order to access the file, which is stored on Google Drive. And then you can read it from the screen or print it. I also added two readings from WPA itself, the famous manifesto written by Peter Williams, what WPA is not, which we discussed many times, and a very short reading, the five pillars of Wikipedia. In, in, within today's um, set of notes, as you will see, there are a couple more links to Wikipedia that I would encourage you to click on and explore, but they're not required readings. So this is Wikipedia at 20, my page with that title. I've added the link to the, the permanent link to the uh, chapter. I can't link the chapter itself because the PDFs, which are open access, are created as an individual session. Uh, so uh, that link does expire. So you click here and then you have to click two more times to actually see the PDF, read it or print it. Chapter three is entitled From Utopia to Practice and Back. Both chapters, chapters three and seven are feel good chapters about Wikipedia, which is good. Uh, you really have to appreciate what people did with Wikipedia, right? So certainly there is quite a bit of ideological exaggeration in these two chapters, meaning they feel good about Wikipedia because they take from the experience of Wikipedia and its social model, what they want, what they need to confirm their view of society. And in this chapter, for example, they see Wikipedia as a kind of utopia that became reality, but then the author of the chapter himself has to conclude that Wikipedia is not uh, all positive, and it's not uh, a, a complete success from that social political angle that they have embraced. So I think it's good to read these chapters because one might easily underestimate what was done with Wikipedia. The creation of a top 10 website in the world used frequently by millions of people without the commitment of private funds, without a powerful organizational structure, uh, without relying on ads, etc. Et Keep in mind though, to, uh, to compensate for the ideological views that you find in these chapters, that the practices of use by most users don't reflect necessarily all this attention to social and political issues. This is not how Wikipedia is being used. It is not why it is being visited daily, not to uh, inform <coughs> social practices of the individual users. Okay, so there is a little bit of emphasis and exaggeration, but there is also reason for that. We can review the summary of the article because it is a, a fair um, description of its content. Wikipedia has been a useful utopia for conceiving how people could cooperate productively without market relations and hierarchies. So they're using utopia here, not just as a metaphor, but with reference to the genre of utopias that you find a little bit in the classical world, for example, Plato's Republic, and a lot more during the 16th and 17th century, meaning treatises where a different kind of society its norms, its organization are being described. And 
the contention of the article, the thesis of the article is we could learn from Wikipedia, meaning we could make it into a social utopia. We could extend the practices of Wikipedia to imagine a different kind of world that is not just based on capitalism or neo-capitalism, neo etc. Okay? Despite the limitations of that vision, so the author himself is saying it's not uh, exactly as we hoped it could be, and disappointments with recent history, Wikipedia remains a critical anchor for working alternatives to neoliberalism. Meaning we could still go that way. And keep in mind, you'll see it clearly in, in a bit, that the, pos the, the political position in this article is not Marxist. Uh, you could call it neo-Marxist. You could call it a vi variant of Marxism that um, became popular during the 2000s and 2010s in a variety of uh, publications and positions and conferences. Uh, there was a, a Nobel Prize for economics that in 2009 went to Eleanor Ostrom uh, for, for similar kinds of concepts. You find uh, an Italian professor, university professor, Ugo Mattei, who's also taught in the US talking about similar things under the label of Beni Comunismo, meaning it doesn't preach the uh, socialization of uh, goods or the abolition of private property. This is an attempt to try a third way between emphasis on private property, capitalism, and any kind of state-controlled society as in the post-war realizations of communism under the Soviet Union, and in China, etc. So it preaches the socialization of some of the key resources in society with complex interactions both with the private market, which is not to be abolished, and with the state, which is not to be uh, completely removed from uh, the view, from the organization of society. You will find a lot of references to these theories known in English as the commons, where the commons are the common goods, the key resources that should not be privatized. And I added a link to the article on Wikipedia about the commons. From there, you can click on Eleanor Ostrom's um, page, for example, and uh, look her up and see her theories, etc., etc. Okay, so what is the manifesto uh, view of Wikipedia? Wikipedia is supposed to demonstrate that people can work together, people in general. Now, is Wikipedians, the community of Wikipedians, people? Uh, is it representative, a representative sample of society? Uh, not so much, right? And, and we know that Wikipedia has always struggled with issues of uh, gender and ethnic diversity. People who have work, can work together, build a shared identity, where shared identity means an identity that is acknowledged by others in a community of practice, meaning a community that engages in some kind of productive activity. Related to knowledge, in the case of Wikipedia, but still, a practice, and another key term related to this is utility in this chapter. Keep in mind that when the author is talking about utility, they are referring to the fact that Wikipedia provides a service. That's the idea behind the term utility in this context, right? People can make things they need, meaning we're not talking about activities that are completely extraneous to the logic of the markets because knowledge and information is something you do need, you satisfy a need, without resorting to enforced market exchanges, which means without people having to subscribe, pay price, people getting a salary to produce, etc. So Wikipedia shows that there is another way. Okay? And Wikipedia 
is placed, the first part of this chapter is all in reference to the first few years of Wikipedia. And in fact, it refers both to Wikipedia on one side and to FLOSS to another, where FLOSS or FOSS is the open source software, free license open source software that became popular in the late 1990s that led, for example, to the creation of Linux, right? Even though in the case of Linux, then there are forks of Linux that are commercial, right? That you have to uh, pay for as well. And during those years, there were other uh, attempts to make open source other kinds of platforms besides Wikipedia and basically they, they failed. Wikipedia was the biggest success on the side of uh, open source, crowdsource knowledge, and Linux, the biggest success on the side of technical software. So, what is the challenge for society, right? They're saying, what kind of crisis we can address with the model we borrow from Wikipedia, working out how we can recombine what has worked in common-based peer production, this is what I was talking about before, to contribute to a genuine alternative to neoliberalism, and, and this is the program, right? We need to understand how to generalize the model of Wikipedia, even though we know Wikipedia itself is not perfect, so we need to work on that. We need to enable people to satisfy their material needs as they work together, meaning you're not paying Wikipedians, but they have a life of some kind. Not all of them live in the basement of their parents, so you need to make people able to work and exist without using the same kind of model, contra contract, etc without being forced into working in a competitive labor market, meaning that there are fewer positions than people, and therefore you, uh, as you know yourselves, as soon as you graduate, if you want to enter the market, you will find that there are no jobs where there is no competition, right? Um, even, even you may think if you're in the humanities that people in STEM have a better um, situation, not at all, there are no easy, uh, job markets and more. How to integrate these practices where you share work and you, share, and you work for, uh, to provide a service into a system that includes and relies on both state and market processes. This is useful to understand that this is not a wholly Marxist view of Wikipedia. It doesn't predicate that the state should be, should expand its control to the whole of society as in the case of the Soviet Union or the traditional Chinese models, and doesn't eliminate the market itself. It's just saying the market is good for some areas of the economy, but there are more areas where this kind of approach can be tried and succeed, okay? And if this alternative way uh, comes to fruition, then the state would benefit, capitalism would benefit, society would benefit as a whole, and you wouldn't have this constant conflict between the state, the private sector trying to control society, and as I said, you can click on commons, and from there you find plenty of links if you want to explore this. So, new model production, they call it commons-based peer production, meaning the example of Wikipedia fits the description of these alternative models of production and social interactions. Social interactions focused on a utility, on a service. So in the case of the late 1990s, developers that believed in open source software, they where loose networks, loose networks meaning they didn't form a movement, they didn't subscribe to a party, right? They didn't form a company, but they believed that there shouldn't be property rights, 
didn't have a formal structure for their organizations because they didn't think one was necessary, they were able to compete with Microsoft, with IBM. No doubt about that, even though there were plenty of operating systems that developed and failed within a few years, and practically the only one that um, survived was, was Linux as open source software that is as strong or stronger than Windows itself, uh, etc. And if you want to know more about free and open source software, false or floss, you can click on the link, but these are not required readings. On the side of Wikipedia, what is the product of that digital culture that developed during the late 1990s? Well, you find thousands of individuals collaborating to produce an encyclopedia that rivals with Britannica or maybe uh, more valuable than Britannica itself, which is the most accomplished traditional encyclopedia uh, of, of its own genre. But again, they do that without property rights, right? You can reuse the material freely from uh, Wikipedia with even more freedom than YouTube or any other such platform without any formal organization, organizational authority. Well, Wikipedia has a foundation, the Wikimedia Foundation. They do have hundreds of employees. They do have some oversight. So one of the contradictions, one of the issues with the article that is partially acknowledged by the author is that uh, is there an organization, no organization, no hierarchy? There is a little bit of organization. There is a little bit of structure. Not as much as you would expect, certainly not as much as Apple, Microsoft, etc. but there is. And there is no formal hierarchy in terms of ranking, I'm the manager, you're the employee, um, the CEO, etc. However, there is a social hierarchy even in the community of Wikipedia. It's a natural, more natural form of hierarchy, but clearly, senior veteran editors have more authority. They know better the policies, the rules, so they gain power from their knowledge within that community. So a hierarchy is formed eventually, okay? So, but to the author, for the author of the article, this is hope that there is an alternative to the uh, capitalist market, right, that you can operate in different ways, in a way that is completely decentralized, right, in terms of production and distribution, in terms of access, you don't even try to monetize the content that you make accessible, but this logic of the center, the periphery, the center, the margins, plays into the discourse of leftist ideologies, right, as you very well understand this, this dream that you don't have to have a central authority, a central power, and this would in turn empower the marginalized groups and communities. It's kind of a utopia, right? So, goes through what is the foundation of capitalism in case you don't have that kind of knowledge. In this case, the components that are being examined are private property, of course, there is no private property in Wikipedia. Commodified exchange, Wikipedia doesn't sell content. Wage labor, Wikipedia doesn't pay, pay their employees. They have employees, but they don't pay Wikipedians. And again, both Wikipedia and open source software uh, stayed away from those basic principles. And you can go through the list and, and find that demonstrated. Peer production, this idea that you can have peers without a hierarchy, making some of them more worthy, more powerful, uh, work together. Well, this peer production is based on rejection of a hierarchy. Coordination is decentralized, meaning uh, the, the bottom of the pyramid can engage in activities that are as powerful as those at the top. Again, this is kind of wishful thinking. There is a hierarchy 
among Wikipedians, and Wikipedians, especially in the past, they, they could be uh, quite nasty. Nasty to newcomers, right? Yeah. Uh, kind of the culture of, that you find in some gamers' communities. Uh, Self-governance, right? But are all Wikipedians equal participants in the process of governance? <laughs> and shared social norms. The shared social norms are actually the policy documents of Wikipedia. Again, how much power over those documents do Wikipedians have? Not as much as implied by this kind of article. The author acknowledges that his reflections are based on the initial impetus that uh, promoted the creation, drove to the creation of Wikipedia. So going back to re-examine what Wikipedia is today, acknowledges that this is not the perfect execution of the desired model. And uh, however, it was different, right? It was different from anything else that existed. And again, it's good to have this kind of even emphatic celebration of Wikipedia because uh, we often just assume that Wikipedia is there, always has been, always will be there without having a sense of the enormous effort that went into it and how different as a model it was. Maybe not as revolutionary as promised here, but certainly different. Okay. Even when Wikipedia, the author says, grew to include larger numbers of editors, they did so without introducing a structure or organization, without a hierarchy, without commodification of the products, for example, without introducing ads. And certainly, how different it was can be seen from the reactions that Wikipedia provoked, because at the beginning especially, nobody thought they could be successful by employing thousands of amateurs to rival uh, the product, products of experts, such as in the case of something like the Encyclopedia Britannica. Okay, so Wikipedia is important. It is not the final word on any topic, the author says, but it is significant enough, had a significant enough impact on, on, on society. As I said, towards the end, there is a re-examination, a critical re-examination of the thesis of the article. The miracle of Wikipedia did not consist in its non-hierarchical governance, and some governance is hierarchical even with Wikipedia. However, it's good enough and can be improved. That's the conclusion that I uh, reproduced by selecting this particular passage among others. Next is chapter seven, which has, is based on the contribution of three women, all Wikipedians, uh, coming from uh, the world of education. And this is based on their experience. And it's easier reading than any of the other chapters exactly because you have the stories of these particular contributors. And it has a nice uh, structure because they use three principles of Wikipedia, be bold, assume good faith, there are no firm rules, and apply them to their own experience, experiences as editors. So this time, at not only included the link to the article itself, but for the first two of those principles, I've included links to Wikipedia articles that I recommend that you review at least the first uh, few paragraphs. In the case of there are no firm rules, that is something that is repeated across a variety of documents. And 
there is no specific article for that policy, devoted just to that policy. So these women belong to a collaborative, to a group called the Working Wikipedia Collaborative, and they define themselves as a group of scholars, teachers, archivists, and librarians. But even archivists and librarians are part of the educational system. Working with Wikipedia in higher education in the Boston area, all women, all rogues, meaning alternative uh, social models, and all convinced of the educational and societal value of the Wikipedia project. The idea of telling their experiences is that Wikipedia can be empowering in general. The language, the ideology of the chapter relates in many ways, direct and also indirect, to this group of Wikipedia documents called Wikipedia Behavioral uh, Guidelines, under which you find a lot of documents, including some of the documents I linked directly, such as Assume Good Faith, Be Bold, Please Do Not Buy the Newcomers, which they actually do a lot of. Even with reference to the examples in this chapter, they, they find, they, they tell you about some nasty confrontations. Okay, so Be Bold is based on this document or has this document in mind with a review, with a rereading of what it means to be bold. In the case of Wikipedia, be bold means be bold with your editing, in the treatment of the content, don't be passive, engage, be productive, because then if you went beyond the spirit of a page or you contravened, you exited the area of a policy principle document, others in the community will help you correct that. So better to do and be undone or revised than not engage at all. That's the idea in, the, in the Wikipedia. In the case of this particular contributor, be bold means be yourself. Even if you belong to a group, even if your social identity is not being uh, acknowledged by the whole of society and you're living in a marginal situation, feel that you have some power. That's why she calls about the imposter syndrome. Well, I'm not worthy of contributing to Wikipedia. And, and the answer, of course, is you are. And this is why this particular movement, this group, has organized, they're not the only ones active in that direction, editing events known as editatons, where people sit together, work together on pages, to support each other in this endeavor, to tell each other you're doing something positive and you should be doing this. Assume good faith from the side of Wikipedia means assume that anyone changing a page, making a revision or adding a new page is acting in good faith. And then examine this neutrally. In the case of this particular contributor, contributor is the story of her, uh, her, her students working for a course on what it means to uh, use an encyclopedia article as a source. And she, uh, this happens in the uh, 2000s, I believe. And she sees that most students are using Wikipedia, are familiar more with Wikipedia than any other encyclopedia. And a colleague suggests, well, in that case, embrace that embrace uh, the inclination of your constituencies, constituency and have students write Wikipedia articles. However, she, uh, they, this teacher, this instructor and the students are met with the lack of confidence from the Wikipedia community, right? Because the Wikipedia community is distrustful of instructors of academia in general, instructors in particular, and you can think of the George Mason um, scandal, the instructor that had a page created by their students about the last American pirate. So some uh, attempt to vandalize uh, Wikipedia are connected to academia. So initial reactions are negative. They proceed 
not creating new articles, but actually simulating the creation of new article with the sandbox. The sandbox is a programming, programmer's playground where you can create an article without making it part of the public repository. But then they see that Wikipedians who have access to those sandboxes will lift content from those simulated articles and they gain acceptance within the community. So everything is positive at the end. And there are no firm rules is the story of another instructor who was at some point one of those instructors saying Wikipedia is not a valid source. And Wikipedia is not a valid source, but not because it is not reliable, but as we said, because it is not a primary or a secondary source. Wikipedia is based on external sources, therefore, you can find sources in Wikipedia that should, you should go to for reference, uh, not use the summary of sources offered by Wikipedia. And once again, there are no firm rules is applied to her life herself because she has this kind of rigid reaction when one day one of the students says, so how old are you exactly? We're all wondering. And, and as a result, she becomes very formal in her teaching, tries to distance herself from the student because she finds this improper. But then she understands that even in teaching, there are no firm rules that you have to be able to interact with students as they are in their identity, not try to modify them, but work with them, not try to get them to conform to a set of rules. So very experiential and very personal, as I said. It's interesting as a reading altogether, not particularly heavy intellectually. Um, now, to conclude, I would like to watch with you at least part of this video, one of those that I linked under today's lesson plan about Obsidian and uh, in this case, uh, we have a user who is comparing Notion with what with which she was familiar uh, and uh, Obsidian. Okay. Spent a good amount of the past month trying my absolute best to switch from Notion to Obsidian, and.